is people will actually think you're smart, whether you're smart or not. You know, you will, you will seem like a genius. Why? Because you're actually taking the time to listen. And most people do not. You know, most people automatically fall into the, the thing of giving advice. Most people do not want advice, you know. We are, we're hypnotists. Or neuro, I'm, a, I'm a neuro-linguistic programmer, not a neuro-linguistic advice giver. You know, if people, want to, if people want Ann Landers, they can write a letter, you know, uh, or call Dr. Phil. Um, you know, we're in, the inf we're in the business of gathering the correct information so you can actually influence people to make some changes. But listening's a lot harder than it seems, you know. And this seems to be such human nature, you know, that, that uh, it, it seems to be inbred. One of the interesting things, a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, uh, FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and do the uh, hostage negotiation course, crisis negotiation course. It's a two-week course there. And it's interesting because the FBI has done an awful lot of um, information gathering and, and statistics and research and this and that and there's something they're very interested in you know is, is these kind of fields you know because uh, how to defuse a crisis situation how to a uh, hostage situation whatever it might be because most people get hurt most police officers get hurt in those type of situations you know and you know and number one thing about police work if we have any policemen in the room or those men worked around is the number one rule is we all go home at the end of the shift you know, and the second is to protect the public. But the first is we got to make it through the day. But anyway, one of the things that they found is there are some groups that are very bad at listening, right? And these groups are, are interesting when you find out. The number one group that makes very bad listeners are police officers, right? Because they're problem solvers. That's their job. We're paying them to solve a problem or we want them to solve a problem, you know, not discuss and gather information. You know, if your car got hijacked, right, if your car, if you got carjacked and they caught the guy at the corner, right, after he like hits you in the head and steals your car and the police show up, you expect them to take action, correct? Solve the problem, get your car back. You don't expect them to go, we need to discuss the situation which led you to, to, to take the desperate action of stealing a car. Right? And even though we're all caring, compassionate healthcare professionals in this room, you'd say like, thump him! Give me back my car! You know? Because that's what, you know, they're, they're paid to show up on site, solve a problem, and move on. You know? And, it, and, it, and it's rapid in its thing. And, and the more practice they get, the, the less they want to listen. It's just, and it's not a judgment, it's just what people do. Another group that makes bad at listeners is medical doctors. You know, and again, it's not, there's not a judgment. We're paying them to solve a problem, you know, um, especially in the current environment, but this has been forever. And especially the longer they've been in business, the more they're going to just gather enough information to make, well, in their case, a diagnosis or whatever, and then do what they have to do and move on. You know, it's, it's, there's no judgment here. It's just what people do. Fine. Okay, good. So we know that. The last group that seems to be very bad, it, well, there's two groups I always mention. One is mental health professionals. Very bad listeners. You think they'd be very good listeners. They're really not, Usually, especially if they've been in the business a long time. Because I would dare say, those of you who have been in the room that's been doing this more than five years, three sentences into your client's talk, you're, you're starting to shut down. 